Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day, maybe for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Layback Gamer, and I don't know why these keep coming out at almost midnight for me, but this one came out at almost midnight last night. So, yeah, I uh, well, wasn't quite able to get to it this time around, and that music is just a touch bit too loud. There we go, there we go. So yes, uh, I decided, okay, rather than attempt to record this at 12.30 at night, when I really want to go to bed, let's, uh, let's go to sleep, and in the morning I'll actually have time to read through it first, and then go on about it, because a good ch part of this is, some is stuff that's already been uh, detailed in the original, or the initial biotech announcement, so, yeah, we're uh, kind of... I promise this episode is, or not episode, this, uh, yeah, I guess it's close enough. I promise going through this isn't going to take as long as the last one. Even though I remember, I know at the beginning I'd said, yeah, this is, I'm not going to take too long on this. Instinctively I knew that, yeah, something, uh, I'm going to take a long time on this. Anyways, so in this post they'll be going over mechanator core concepts, infrastructure, and labor mechanoids. Unfortunately, we're not able to get the combat mechanoids this time around, but it'll be very interesting to see in the next post when that is. And something tells me it's going to be, once again, released at 11 o'clock at night for me. I don't know what time zone I'm tie-ins over in, but oh well. We'll make do. Anyways, a mechanator link is a new... Well, we've already gone over the mech link. You install it in your head, and it allows you to control the different mechs. I don't think what did get over, what, did, what didn't get quite covered, is the mechanics behind it. So, uh, it's not. It's possible for us to do a single person mechanator run. Where run runs around the, on a grand base, surrounded by semi-walk machines. Just making this. That and because exotic pat exotic play paths are so fun to explore. Yes, I know. I'm actually Kurt. A lot of ones that I do on my own series, I just do, or not on my own, just on my own, I often do with a single pawn. And with the vanilla expanded collection, it's surprising how far a single pawn can actually go. So, yeah. And I, I did like the, I did like this line here. All our game mechanics interact freely. It's possible for your mechanator to be a high noble with the royalty expansion, a religious prophet with the ideology expansion, and a deathless blood drinker with this biotech expansion. Because, you know, why not? I did actually like that. Why not? Why not just have one man be, have expectations so high that it's impossible to meet him, even if you're the mechanic. Like, I wouldn't want him to be the noble or the religious prophet. Because have you seen how high their expectations are? Like, even the pro, I think it goes up by two. And the noble actually, I believe, gets its own special expectations. So, yeah, I think the only one I would have a go with is a deathless blood drinker, unless now he has expectations <laughs> unique to him. Uh, I agree, why not, but also, seriously, wh why would you do that with the gameplay mechanics? Uh, anyways, Mechanators start with the ability to command just a few mechs over time can grow into a giant swarm. They do this by gaining more bandwidth and control groups, and this is the mechanics of it. But bandwidth determines how many mechanoids a Mechanator can gestate and control at once. A Mechanator who loses bandwidth will temporarily disconnect from some of the Mechanoids. If a Mechanoid is left disconnected for too long it may reconnect with the wild mech hive and leave or attack you so uh try not to try not to get have them lose bandwidth i'm not sure how we gain bandwidth didn't quite see that up here or any of this by the way this is this is kind of a uh, lore chunks there so if you want to pause and read through it uh you could go ahead and do that i've already read through it on my own time and mechanoid challenges. I believe this was this is a bit of a rehash from uh, why mechanoids in the in the initial update. So again, if you want to read, you want to read through it. Go ahead, pause. Feel free to pause, read through it, or actually, better yet, go read the post itself through Steam or Steam articles. This is the this is the big one here. 
Mechadoids require heavy infrastructure that take up a lot of space and burns a lot of electricity. Big sectors of your colony can be turned into mechadoid maintenance production and control centers. You'll feel your plunky wooden village turning into a grand integrated machine of generators, chargers, control nodes, and gestators. Probably what these are. I'm going to assume these are chargers then. Or they're generators. I'm not. No, wait. These are the char. Sorry, we are, we established this. These are the charger here. So then these are probably the generators. Would be my guess. Or could no wait. Sorry, these are control nodes. I'm I'm not thinking. So these are these are the generators or the gestators. I mean, these are your control nodes. These are your. Uh, these are your chargers, and I guess this machine here must be the generator. Would this be? I'm not. No, this looks like for genes, for your gene modification over here. This this has got to be a generator of some sort. Anyways, each mechanoid must contain a mechanoid brain known as a subcore, short for subpersona core, the psychic substrate on which a uh, on which a dim subhuman level intelligence can be hosted. We've seen plenty of these in game. There are several different types of subcores with more advanced mechanoids require more advanced subcores. Yeah, we've seen in game subprof cores, which will allow you to instantly research a tech, as well as persona cores, which you needed for some buildings. And I believe you could actually install them into pawns, or at least you at one point you could. I remember installing it into one of my better colonists when I was first playing, and he ended up turning rogue and killing half the colony before I put him down. Base level subcores can be produced by a mechanator j with just some resources and a subcore encoder. More advanced subcores require psychic pattern from a human mind. I'm guessing that's probably what this these are then. If they're not the genes, these are the uh, these are what we're getting the cores from. Require a part or she can be placed at a subcore soft scanner. This is it right there. And scan to produce a subcore that temporarily causes mental effects, but is ultimately harmless. The more most advanced Need extreme high fidelity psychic patterns to work and be ready using only a subcore rip scanner, which scans the brain quickly at ultra high energy, destroying it in the process. So basically, it's a one way trip. You want the most powerful one, you gotta kill a colonist in order to get to that. Which, if you're running a colony as, uh, with, that has a lot of slaves or prisoners, I don't think that's exactly a bad thing. It To me, it'd be the equivalent of you're putting it in a form, or like a what are they called? I guess maybe a memory chip. You're upload. You're digitally uploading their brain into a template, and then the template is then put into the mechanoid. Except obviously, it's a little more controlled. Once it's ready, the mechanoids can, mechanoids could be produced in mech gestators instead of building being built like normal machines. Are gestated in mechanite rich solution accelerants, mechanoid molecule by molecule, in a quasi biological process. Gestation takes time, electricity, resources, and occasionally guidance by your mech by the mechanator. Only a mechanator can guide the gestation process, since it requires a psychic link to to the growing mechanoid. As always, everything about the mechanoids links back to the humans who they serve. All right, interesting, interesting. So I guess that's the lore of them. They were, uh, I guess, the more advanced ones nowadays. Instead of being built, they were actually uh, created. Very interesting. Uh, there are several sizes of gestators. Small gestators are used for small mechs. Large are used for to produce, large are used for the larger ones, the ultra heavy war machines. Little mechs gestate. The small guys can gestate pretty quickly, and the big ones take a long time to grow. And actually, let's pull up the pictures here. You kind of get a better view. So these are the large ones that we got. No, this is, these are the small ones that we have going on, I believe. And then these two here are the big ones. Now, like I said, you got the batteries. Control nodes. I'm assuming this is the generator, which now that I'm looking at this, I almost think this is actually garbage. It's just trash. Trash bags. And here you can see the uh We get we we can only see the uh the labor ones, which I assume are the uh, we're missing one labor one from here, I believe. Yeah, I think we're missing one of the labor ones for here, but mo primarily, I believe all the labor bots are going to be generated from the small guys, and then the big ones are going to generate all the combat ones, with exception of one labor. But we'll get to that in just a bit. 
Uh, let's see here. Mechanoids of Kutuvi are, on, are onboard supply over time. We must recharge at mech rechargers. We saw that. Uh, they'll automatically seek out available chargers so don't run out of energy. If they do run them out, they'll answer self shut down and slowly re and recover energy very slowly. Much better to have a mech, rechar mech charger available to keep your mechs working hard at all times. Several sizes of chargers incorporate the tiers. They consume a lot of power and pl produce pollution as well. The characteristic cost of mechanoids. Yeah, kind of figured that one. Yeah, band nodes, which I believe that's what these are here. I might be wrong. They might be the mech, might be the mech signals, potentially. Uh, well, no, I think they're the band nodes. Are signal amplifiers that could increase the mechanator's total bandwidth. Okay, so this is what increases their bandwidth, and that would make sense that these are those. They can quickly be tuned to a specific mechanator. However, returning a band node to a different mechanator is a complex task. It requires a long time. There's no limit to how many band nodes a mechanator can build. So a mechanator can have a huge swarm that will require a heavy infrastructure to control. That makes sense. Boosters enhance the buildings that boost, or enhance buildings that boost speed and work of nearby mechanoids. Great for powering up mechanoid-based factories. Uh, signals are a, set, are a set of single-use structures that could be be used to call by mechanator to call on a fierce and fearsome super mechanoid enemies to attack you. You need to call these enemies so you could loot their corpses for special high tech mechanoid chips. These chips are, are core to the mechanoid pro progression since they are needed to advance the next tier of mechanoid technology. This structure. Uh, the, the structure of choose your own enemy and it's ready is a little new for RimWorld and creates a new kind of self directed game pace for the player as opposed to blindside raids with, uh, at any time. Well, I wouldn't say it's necessarily new unless it's a vanilla uh, uh, unless it's a vanilla expanded thing. There are quests in the games that allow you to taunt your enemies into taunting enemies into attacking you. Or to dropping mech, mech hives or dropping insects. So I wouldn't say it's new. Maybe it's a new twist on it. I would I would say that. But I don't think it's a new concept. Because, well, we kind of had... There's something similar to that already in the game. Maybe, it, sure, maybe it's, you know, it's essentially at a push of a button. We can have it. Whereas, like, hacking, say, hacking a space drone. It's, yeah, they're going to be attacking. But they won't attack for X amount of time. But when you accept the quest, you accept that, hey, you're going to be attacked. So I, I don't think it's a new... I don't think it's a little... I don't, I don't think it's on the new side. Maybe a new twist on it, but... I'm not even sure I could call it a new twist because the drones, like I said, even they, it gives you... It tells you how long you have until enemies attack. So I, I, I kind of disagree well on that one. Explore these super nacanoids in more detail in the next block. I can't wait for that. This could be exciting. All right. We're not going to go through all of it. We're not going to go through and read all the text here. I'm going to kind of go through the... So the, the titles really just describe what they are. So you have paramedics that heal, lifters that haul, constructors that build, agri-hands that agriculture, cleaners that clean, or clean sweepers that clean, fabricators that craft stuff, and tunnelers that dig. So the, I believe each of them also has an additional trait with them. So the, uh, for instance, the paramedic uh, has a built-in fire foam, which can extinguish fire. Which is very nice and let's see here oh and they got all they could also perform surgery but i i kind of was expecting that with a paramedic lifters they're small weak and pretty easy to get used to always having around so they can't fight themselves so and i think the paramedics also the same way these two can't fight lifters i think are honestly just going to be really key for a lot of people probably some of the first mechs that people build and you have the constructors that build things and it has a small gun, and and it can defend itself. Not a good frontline fighter, but it's sort of one of those. Uh, it's last line of defense. If it has to, it'll fight. Agricultures can me can melee attack. Clean sweepers melee attack as well. Fabricators uh, is can can hit with a range. Apparently, they're not as they can't do the same same quality of work as a skilled human. I, I'm assuming they could probably build like a good or excellent quality stuff, for for example, but they couldn't, you know, they can't do master work or legendary works, which makes sense because it's supposed to be very automated. 
Uh, tumblers are a bit interesting because they have these things are much bigger. And like I said, like I said earlier, they're probably going to be produced since we can, you know, you can see the picture here. You got the milter, the lifter, the constructor, the agrahan, the clean sweeper, the fabricator, and the paramedic. Now, milter is probably the basic uh, militia type you bought that can be built here inside the small gestator. The large gestator is going to have the tunneler plus all the other combat mechanoids that we saw earlier. Why is this guy running away? And there must be some enemy on the map. Anyways. Uh, let's see here. So the tunnelers has a large amount of tech, so we'll go through this one. They're mat, acid, heavily armored mechanoids equipped with giant crushing claws. Think melee damage. The tunneler can dig tunnels and mine resources tirelessly in combat. It's slow, but very strong armor. It can make it an excellent tank for absorbing enemy fire while you, it, while others deal damage. The tunneler has a built-in smoke pot pack, which can activate to spread smoke and shields itself from incoming fire. So it's a really good frontline tank. It also has a sh the shield pack that recharges over time. Its one weakness is, you know how when you damage a pawn, it's nor it slows down for a few seconds before it starts to pick up. I think this one this one has a extended version of that. So these are super easy to kite at range. They're very weak to range attacks. But if you're in a melee fight. And yeah, these things are going to be really good. I wonder if they're going to potentially replace the termites in terms of breach attacks. Since the termites were introduced in 1.3 in order to... It, alongside breach axes. Which would make, you know, attack, trying to av avoid people using kill boxes and... And, tunnel, and funneling through kill chambers. That's sort of the point of... Of that, I wonder if these guys are going to be are going to be like a melee type of that. So now the mechanoids have a melee version as well as a ranged version. That would be interesting to see what they do with that. And like I said, they when it takes damage, it's slowed for a few seconds, meaning that when the tunnel attacks you, even if you can't kill them quickly, you can intelligently kite them back from your position, escape the blocking smoke, maintain distance, and whittle down the tunneler is down. More mech combats in the next post. So that's all for this one. And of course we got the pictures here. So you got your paramedic, you got your cleaner. And again, I'm thinking this is garbage actually. Instead of an actual type. Maybe it's an actual type of resource, but these just look like trash. Now that I look at them, they look more like trash bags. So yeah, I may have been uh, slightly mistaken with that one. So you got the haulers, the constructors, the agrahands. The cleaners, the uh, the crafters, and then the tunnelers. Yes, pretty exciting stuff. I'm really pumped to see what we got coming up next. That was everything for this. Uh, it would have been nice to have seen all the mechanoids in one, but I guess, you know, you, we kind of have to space this out a little bit since we're not sure when it's coming out. I had to take a guess as to how much they're going to separate this. We're probably going to get children reproduct. Uh, Children reproduction in one after the Mechanator. Actually, I gotta say, this one's probably gonna... Eh, take that back. I think this one will probably be the one of the last posts that come out, since there are already mods that cover through this. The Mechanator is really new. And then Gene Modding is kind of one of those ones that I imagine they're gonna... They'd be excited to show off some of their... Uh, some of their creations with this. Because that... I I think on, I'm not sure where it said it. I want to say on here that they were really excited to create a, was it? Actually, I think it was in G20. Oh yeah, the pigskins. I had a ton of fun writing name generators for the new Xenohuman factions. So yes, I uh, expect at least, I'd say three or four more, or I'd say somewhere between three or three to four. One thing that I actually did want to mention before I call this episode, before I call this done, is uh, this expansion does, unlike the the predecessors, doesn't actually have a new end goal. Ideology introduced the Arco Nexus as a new end, as a new ending. The royalty introduced, uh, like as ascension to the royal faction. As an ending, biotech doesn't look like it has one, which I think is a bit of a missed opportunity. 
uh, as well. You could end the, you can end the game as sort of like a technologically more advanced than everybody. If say you build, maybe you get the strongest pot, you get the strongest pawn type, as well as you gestate the strongest mechanoid type. And those guys require the you know the standard fifteen days each, and you got to start them both and you start them both together inside one of the uh, like inside a linked gestation pod. So. I'm wondering if we are going to see a new ending to this. As can I, uh, can we scroll down any further? I want to kind of go back to where ideology was being released. See that? Oh no 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 no! All right, let's just do this. Hold on. No, there are a lot of patch notes that I forgot. Oh, here we go. There we are. Uh, we're all, oh, almost there. Let's see here. There we go. No. Not it. Oh, this is the announcement for it, so... Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just trying to go through this and see... Uh... I don't think in the initial... No, I don't think it was actually... Uh... I don't think it, it, it... Did it mention it here? No, it doesn't. So may, maybe there might be hope that we are actually... That 114... That, not 114. That uh, Biotech is going to be releasing... Is also going to be coming along with another ending to the game. That would make it um, on par with it. Although something that I just saw in a... Just a Reddit post as I was trying to look up more information was... Unfortunately... It's unfortunate that Biotech wasn't named to something that started with an M because one of the guys was saying, uh, like then all then they could have continued the trend of all the DLC, the first di the first letter spelling out Rimworld. So Rimworld, so the first one was royalty, and you have ideology, and it's a shame this one didn't have one. So last night I this might be a little cringe, but last night I actually came up with an interesting one that would sum this up. So let's just go down to here. So this is this expansion which should now be renamed Mechano Mechanoids Mo Modification Mechanoids and by goodness there's children now. Look, I found it funny last night. Which I'm not sure if I should be ashamed of, but anyways, that's all for this episode. Uh, that's all for this covering of of modding, mechanoids, and my goodness, there's children DLC, otherwise known as biotech. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Let me know in the comments what you think. I was honestly, I was really hoping to have seen all of the mechanoids at once, but you know, good things come to those who wait. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you really enjoyed. Share this around with anybody you think will enjoy this sort of stuff. And till next time, take it easy.